Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. In a previous video that I did on adding a fascia to your layout, I also mentioned that I was going to be adding a shelf uh, to the front of the layout as well. And in this video, that's what I'm going to do. So stick around for the video and I'll give you some tips on how you can add a shelf on your layout to prevent that type of clutter that just builds up uh, all over your scenery and your track and places like that. So let's get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click all. That way, you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. Well, before we get started on building a shelf here on the uh, fascia, I do want to give you a couple of announcements. So the first thing is that for several months now, I've been working steadily on building the modules here as part of the Build a Model Railroad project. And uh, that's taken up uh, almost all of my time down here in the layout room. I haven't done anything with the Peabot Southern except a little bit of ballasting. And so I need to start doing a little bit more work uh, on the Piedmont Southern, getting some things accomplished there. Because, you know, with a vaccine coming, there's a, a chance that sometime in the next six months, I might actually be able to start operations. Uh, so I need to get somewhere to the point that I can actually do that. Uh, so I uh, look forward to seeing more videos on projects on the Piedmont Southern itself. Okay? Now, also, uh, the other part of, of my, uh, my channel subject matter, other than building these modules, uh, and traditionally has been uh, DCC-related subjects. And I've pretty much ignored that for the, uh, for the last few months. So I need to start doing a little bit more of that as well. I also have a number of other uh, things in the pipeline that uh, I will be covering over the next couple of months. And um, you'll just have to wait to see what those are. That's a surprise. Uh, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to concentrate on the uh, videos here about building the modules uh, for Fridays. Okay, so look forward to that in the future. Uh, the Friday video uh, that I do uh, every week will still be related to uh, something to do with these, uh, with these modules. Um, a lot of the work that we're coming to now is going to be scenery related. So we've got to get, you know, the scenery done, we've got to get the ballasting done, got to get the rails painted, all that kind of stuff has to be done. And then I've got to start building some structures to go on this layout. Now another thing uh, that has come up is um, after the video that I did on installing a bus under the, uh, under the layout, the DCC power bus, I started getting questions from people about uh, twisting wires and you know questions like when do I need to to uh, to twist? Uh, where do I need to twist? How much twisting do I need to do? All kinds of, of topics like that. So um, I've put off doing a video on this subject for uh, some time now because it is a highly technical subject but it is a topic that a lot of people have asked me about so I'm going to go ahead and do a video on twisted pair wiring and try to at least demystify it to a certain degree. So for the future, uh, expect Monday videos to be something related to DCC or construction here on the, P uh, on the Piedmont Southern or some other general uh, railroading topic other than dealing with some aspect of construction of the modules themselves. And then on Fridays, we'll have the usual uh, video on some aspect of construction of the modules. Uh, back when I did the uh, video on adding a fascia to the front of the modules, I said that I was also going to be adding a shelf to them as well. And that's what we're going to do today. Okay? And first, I want to give you an overview of how I go about doing this, and then we'll actually go through the steps. And there's not that many. It's a fairly quick and easy project that you can knock off on a Sunday or a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon. I start with some uh, one by three pine and give it a nice 45 degree angle here. And let me move this out of the way. And then this has to be cut wide enough so that it's going to fit under the uh, full width of the module. 
Okay? Since these are two feet, that means this has to be two feet plus the width of the shelf. And my shelves here are going to be five and a half inches because I'm going to use a one by six. So these need to be 24 inches plus five and a half is 29 and a half inches wide. Okay? Very simple. 45 degree angle, then cut the full length to 29 and a half on my modules. And you need two of these for each module. And then what I'm going to do is attach them to the underside of the layout. And they will act as the support brackets for the shelves themselves. And let me give you an idea of how I go about doing that because um, it, it will bring up some questions. Um, but let me first, let me go ahead and, and talk about doing the shelf. Now, the shelf itself, as I said, is, uh, I use a one by six. So you need a one by six, four feet long, or I did anyway, for my modules because they're two feet by four feet. And I'm doing two of them, so one, uh, one by uh, six by eight is adequate for both of these modules. Cut it four feet long, and you can see it's going to sit right on those shelf supports that I just showed you. Okay. So, very straightforward on that end. Then I picked up uh, this trim molding, and it's basically about one and five eighths inch and about a quarter of an inch uh, thick. Okay, And it's nice because it's got a square edge on this edge and it's kind of rounded over up on this edge. And what I'm going to do is add that to the front of the shelf itself. So it's going to uh, be uh, glued and nailed uh, to the front of the uh, 1x6 and that's going to give you a nice lip so that if you put a pencil on there it's not going to roll off or get knocked off. Okay, And it's going to keep drinks from getting knocked off hopefully. Okay. Now let's take a look at how I'm going to mount those shelf brackets or shelf supports. Okay, so if you take a look, I've taken the shelf uh, support here and I've just attached it with my quick clamp uh, temporarily to the inside of the legs here. And I'm going to attach mine with a couple of, uh, couple of screws to the uh, inside of the legs uh, on each side here. And that way it's going to bind the legs together even better. So uh, it will be held together at the top. I've also got a, uh, a similar support across the bottom of these legs. So it's going to make that uh, leg assembly a more permanent structure. But it's all still going to be removable. Now, for those of you who might not want to do that, I suggest you take a simple 2x2 two two and attach it to the uh, inside of the uh, side of the baseboard. And that can act as the support, and then you can remove your legs separately. So that's a quick and easy way to attach it. As far as other things go, you might want to consider, if you're going to be doing a lot of exhibitions and going to shows and things of that nature, you might want to put your interface panels or throttle uh, uh, plug-in panels on the rear side of the layout uh, where your crews, operating crews, and I'm assuming you're going to be operating from the other side and the, uh, away from the viewing public. Uh, but at any rate, you can put these on the other side. And as I showed you previously, you can put these uh, push-pull buttons for the, uh, uh, for the blue point switch machines on both sides of the, of, the, of the layout, if you wish. Or you could put them just on the back side so that the viewing public only sees a, uh, a blank fascia as opposed to push buttons and, and uh, plug-in panels and things like that, and a shelf. And if you put your shelf on the back side, that gives you and your crews a place to put their throttles and their drinks and tools and anything else uh, that they might uh, uh, want to be using, and uh, makes for a very convenient uh, type of operation. Okay, so then, they, uh, as I said, these are going to be attached to the insides uh, of both legs, uh, because you need the two supports, and then the shelf itself will drop into place right on top of these. And then those will be screwed, uh, screwed down uh, using a couple of more uh, screws like these. So what I want to do now then is go ahead and proceed with attaching the um, piece of trim molding to the front of our shelf so we can get that started gluing and then we'll go ahead and work on attaching these uh, shelf supports. Okay, I have my Elmer's wood glue, which I have decanted into my mustard bottle, as you've seen in the past. And I'm just going to take that and run 
a bead of glue along the edge here of the board. And I'm going to run that the full length of the board that's going to be the shelf here. There we go. And then I'm just going to take a scrap old uh, Q-tip or and run it the full length to distribute the glue a little bit. Probably don't need it, but I thought I would do that. Okay. Throw that away. And then I've got my strip here, trim strip. And we'll drop that in place on top here and get it lined up. Okay. And then I just have some small brads here that I had laying around in a drawer. So I'm just going to tap those into place here on the layout. Make sure this end, yeah, good. Both ends are straight. Okay, we got one in there, and I'm going to put a center one real quick and get that stabilized. I'm going to start that one again. Don't like the way it's going. There we go. Okay, and then we'll get another one down at the far end over here. Okay, and then I want a couple of intermediate ones here, because once this glue dries, it's going to be the thing holding this, show, this together. Okay, there we go, and um, got a little bit of glue on me. It's got a little bit of warpage in it, but once we uh, screw that into place uh, on the supports, that's going to settle it down real well. And um, now I'm going to set this aside and let it dry while we go ahead and attach our shelf supports. Okay, I want to start with my countersinking bit and go ahead and put a couple holes in here, and then we'll screw them in place. Okay. And Okay, there's number one. And with one in place, I can take the uh, quick clamp off. And we can go ahead and get another one done. Okay, there we go. And I'll do the back side off camera. So let's go take a look at the other side here. Okay, let me adjust this uh, clamp so I can get to it. Here we go. There. Now, 
We'll drill that first hole, get things set straight. That can come off now. Okay, so that's both of the brackets and I'll, like I said, off camera, I'll go around and do the backside. So next we need to go ahead and attach the shelf. Okay, so we've got the brackets or the shelf supports in place and the, uh, the glue is dried. So let's go ahead and add the shelf itself uh, to the supports. Uh, for that, I again um, am just going to be drilling a couple of holes here and uh, putting those screws directly into the shelf supports. So let me zoom in for that. Okay, I made my measurements and I need to be two and a half inches in from the end here to catch the center of that shelf bracket. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've marked it. Let's go ahead and drill the holes. I'll play lefty today. And we'll knock some dust off. There we go. Now I drilled those uh, countersinking holes uh, especially deep uh, so that I can fill those with wood putty. And uh, once the wood putty dries, then I'll be able to paint these shelves and uh, completely cover these screw heads. So let's go ahead and get these in place and get the other side done. And we'll be done, except for painting. Okay, now let's go down to the other end. Okay, just like at the other end, I'm going to mark at uh, two and a half inches. So we'll have a spot to drill. Okay. Okay, so that's it. The shelf is installed. Let's stand back and take a look. And as you can see, it provides a great place to lay the power cab uh, main control or the main throttle. And you know, you've got your additional uh, Power Pro uh, throttle that you can use and just miscellaneous stuff, a pencil, whatever you want, you need to uh, just sit down somewhere for a few minutes. It's a great place to do it. And you know, considering the width of the module or narrowness of the module, it's reasonably stable. So you don't have to worry about people tipping your whole module over, uh, particularly once the two of them are connected together and it's all stabilized again. So at this point, that's all there is to it. Give this a try because I can't tell you how convenient it is to have a shelf like this on the front of the layout. It's a great place to set your tools down, to set your cup of coffee down or your throttle or paperwork or anything else that you might be carrying in your hands at the same time that you're trying to operate trades. And you know, it doesn't take a lot of effort and it's never too late to add these things. They're very easy to just add on to the bottom um, of the structure of the layout. I've got it on the front of all of my uh, straight sections on the Piedmont Southern and even one on a curved section where uh, I managed to build it into the corner. So these things are very straightforward, easy to install, and they just add a lot of operating convenience. So that's about it for today. Have a great week, and we'll see you again on Friday with another new video.